Hello, welcome to this 40 days with God in the book of Colossians. For today, there will be two parts in this session. The first part will be a short introduction and then we will dive in into session one. How many of us, when we discover uh, good things, we will get excited and immediately we want to share with others. For example, this uh, recent e Panjana 50 ringgit uh, through touch and go and boost. Do you know about it? Did you share with others? Have you ever encountered people sharing good things with you? And that was exactly what Apropos did. Apropos was from Colossae. He went to Ephesus. Ephesus is about 160 kilometer from um, Colossae probably about uh, the distance between Kuala Lumpur and Malacca. But back in those days, there was no cars. So Paul was preaching Christ in Ephesus and Apropos came to hear about it and he came into faith. So enthused, excited, he brought this good news, this gospel back to Colossae. And as a result, just like him, some of the Colossians came to faith and the church in Colossae was birth. And the book of Colossians is a letter written to this young church by Paul. Why was this letter written? My brothers and sisters, we need to remember this, that the Colossians, they do not have the Bible like we do. And this letter was written for its doctrinal content and also application with the goal of spiritual maturity. The surrounding culture during that time was very much influenced by legalistic ideas, philosophical ideas. Epaphras sought Paul to affirm, to strengthen, and to challenge the Colossians to remain steadfast in their faith, but also and also to live out their lives in Christ. And likewise for us today, why are we having these 40 days with God? Why is the church constantly emphasizing about uh, God's word and also prayer? It is simply because of this same goal that is Christian maturity, that we will remain in Christ and that we will live out our lives in Him. One of the anchoring verses found in Colossians is this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you are taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. The theme for the book of Colossians is Christ-centered. This was Paul's wise approach in countering false uh, teachings and also heresies to be christ Centered. Paul did not argue or defend what others were claiming. He just simply shared the fullness of Christ because to Paul, the knowledge of Christ himself is all sufficient to expose all false ideology. Christ himself suffers. Amen? My brothers and sisters, this is something notable for us to emulate. For example, we do not need to argue, we do not need to defend, we do not need to get agitated or ruffled up or try to correct others when uh, about their comments or their practices. We just need to share the greatness and the goodness of Christ. Leave it out as a testimony in our lives and allow others to see for themselves that Christ himself suffices. There will be five sessions in this series, and today is going to be session one. The title for today's session is Faith in Christ, and the scripture passage that we are going to cover for today is Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. I believe that most of you who are following this series, you would have read this passage. One prominent thing noteworthy in uh, Paul's uh, letter is that he encapsulated the overall uh, doctrinal content in the form of prayer. Right at the start, in the beginning in chapter 1, which we are going to look into later on, and then 
in the, at the end, in chapter 4, that will be our last session. Everything begins and ends with prayer. Did you know that prayer goes hand in hand with our faith? Meaning, our faith requires us to pray, and we pray because we have faith. Our faith meaning being a Christian, we are called to pray. And why do we pray? It is simply because we have faith that God is true to His word, that God is true to His promises, and He will answer our prayers. Our faith requires us to pray, and we pray because we have faith. There are three levels to Paul's prayers in this passage, and the first level is blessings. Verse 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae and our faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace be to you from God our Father. Paul's signature salutation in all his letters always include grace and peace. Paul often uses one word to convey the richness of its meaning. Grace and peace here is not simply a, a simple a casual greeting like how we ask, how are you? I hope that you are doing fine and you are well. Both grace and peace are gifts of God that Paul blesses their hearers and in his greetings, likened to a prayer of blessings unto them. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Paul alluded grace to salvation, the gospel itself. When he greeted, grace be to you, he meant forgiveness, redemption, restoration, justification, glorification, enabling power and grace be unto you as well. So it's not, I hope that you are fine, I hope that you are well, but all of this richness of his blessings to be prayed unto you to be blessed unto you. This is the saving grace that brings forth the saving faith. And when Paul greeted, peace be unto you, that is the peace of God that is beyond understanding that he is praying upon your life. The peace with God reconciling all things, making us right with God, uh, God's acceptance of us, the peace with others, that harmony, that non-hostility, the living in peace with one another, the peace with self, the absence of strife, the absence of confusions within us uh, that is uh, affecting us sometimes. So Paul, when he greeted, peace be unto you, Paul meant all of this be also unto you. Can you now see the richness of Paul's uh, blessings in his salutation? He is praying the fullness of salvation, that faith in Christ, right at the start of his greeting for the hearers. My brothers and sisters, whenever you read of these uh, greetings in these epistles or letters as you call it, may I encourage you to also receive these blessings and encouragements and appropriate appropriate them into your lives so that it will strengthen your faith. Another aspect of peace is where the prophets of Old Testament speak of shalom, uh, the complete restored created order. Jesus Christ is the shalom prophesied, Jesus Christ is the shalom fulfilled, and Jesus Christ is the shalom restored reconciling all things on earth and in heaven to himself. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. Paul prayed blessings upon the Colossians in his greetings. The second level of Paul's prayer is thanksgiving. The scripture reference are from verses 3 to 8, which I will not be reading. Again, Paul here was praying for the Colossians with thanksgiving to God for their faith in Christ, expressed through their love for the believers because of their hope that they have in heaven. Paul was thankful because these young believers 
had not fallen away from their faith despite that impending pressure to do so. He prayed for them constantly that they may be anchored strongly in that gospel that they have heard so that they will not be enticed, so that they will not be snatched away and falter away from their faith. My brothers and sisters, who are some of those uh, young and vulnerable in faith that uh, we can pray for them that they will not falter away from their faith? Could it be our children? Could it be the youths in our church? What about those who just got back uh, from overseas from their studies? Or young adults who are uh, pressured by career on one hand and a new family life on the other hand? Could they be newcomers, new believers in that faith? Or someone who is wavering in their faith because of that crisis that they are going through? Who are some of those that we can stand along with in prayer and encouragement, even during this phase of their faith and their journey in life? Our prayer avails, avails much, for there are lots of um, temptation and ideologies out there. My brothers and sisters, our prayers produced by our faith in Christ are effectual. I can testify that um, I faltered from uh, my faith after primary school. In my secondary school, there was no Christian fellowship. And because of that excitement, teenage years, I kind of forgot about God. But I really thank all those who have been praying for me. People like my elder brother, people in church. Um, example, these um, salvation cards that we write out the names in and um, the general prayers that we pray for uh, the faith of the people and for those to come back to the faith in Christ. So never underestimate our prayers uh, because they are effectual. I'm really grateful that uh, these prayers have been prayed over me. If not for these prayers, probably I will not have come back to the faith and I will not be here even today sharing this message. Next, Paul pointed out to the Colossians the true message of the gospel will find its trilogy of faith, love, hope present wherever the gospel spreads and will powerfully change hearts and lives, just as it has changed theirs. There is nothing mystical about it, and this similar pattern is seen everywhere else the gospel is being proclaimed. This is to counter some surrounding ideologies being introduced, undermining the sufficiency of the gospel, that grace and faith in Christ alone is not enough. The truth is, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. And so to recap, Paul blessed the Colossians in his greetings, his first level of prayer in his blessings for them. And Paul affirmed of their faith in his thanksgiving, his second level of prayer for them in thanksgiving and now paul have moved to the third level in interceding for the specific things for them verse 9 to 14 for this reason since the day we have heard about you we have not stopped praying for you we continually ask god to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have that great endurance and patience, giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of His holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Verse 9. 
we have not stopped praying. We continually ask God indicate an ongoing prayer. An ongoing prayer chain. That is also why as the church we have corporate prayer altars to um, uh, consistently uphold our nation, to uphold the body of Christ, the church, our families and individuals into God's hands and also the 24-7 prayer altars. Prayer is essential in the Christian faith. Paul's faith was demonstrated through his prayer. Paul's prayers were rich with theological treasures and they are timeless. They were vital for the believers back then in the first century and also essential for us now, today. How did Paul approach prayer and what did Paul intercede for the Colossians? How did Paul approach prayer? Paul's approach to prayer was by faith. It was spirit-led, spirit-enabled. The Bible says, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. And likewise too, we must approach prayer by faith. Billy Graham said, Prayer is more than a wish. It is the voice of faith directed to God. And Stephen Fertig, Prayer is the arena where our faith meets with God's abilities. Amen? We pray spirit-led prayers from knowledge. We are informed. We are aware of what is happening uh, in uh, uh, the things that is surrounding us. For example, that pandemic, that politics, uh, economy. And we are also uh, aware of the word of God, the knowledge from his word. So in alignment, when we see something that is not right, for example, if corruption occurs in nation, we will pray, justice and righteousness to prevail in our nation. That is to pray in alignment with the word of God, in form and with knowledge. We also pray with knowledge uh, given by the Holy Spirit's prompting that we are sensitive to his leading. Specific issues, for example, let's say um, for the pandemic, there are so many issues to pray for. But probably at that moment, at that specific time, the Holy Spirit is prompting us to pray specifically for the frontliners or for healing for those who are affected by COVID-19. So we pray prayers proclaiming the promises in the Word of God uh, in faith, by faith. We pray spirit-led prayers by knowledge, and then we pray spirit-enabled prayers from position. We are a child of God. We are the royal priesthood. We are citizens of heaven. So when we pray, we pray with power, with authority from who we are in Christ. Our status, our position, our authority will be effectual whenever we pray these prayers. Next. What did Paul intercede for the Colossians? Paul interceded for their spiritual maturity. Remember, the goal for this uh, uh, the uh, letter to these Colossians is for their spiritual maturity. And also likewise for us today, the goal for us for these 40 days uh, we've got in the book of Colossians is also for spiritual maturity. So what are we to pray for? We are to pray for spiritual blessings, not just material blessings. Why? Because once we have this spiritual blessing, somehow all other blessings will also fall in place. Some of these blessings are found in the following verses. Verse 9, the knowledge of God's will. This knowledge is the understanding of the mystery of salvation and includes what part we are in, in this uh, plan of God, in his kingdom plan. How can we pray? For us, we can pray for spiritual direction, wisdom, understanding in all our pursuits, whether it is work-related, whether it is family-related. We pray 
uh, that we will make that decision that we will stay in the center of his heel so that his favor and his blessing will also go with us. Verse 10, the ability to please God, living a life worthy of him. What we can pray for is God's enabling strength upon us to do what he requires us that is pleasing to him. We want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Make it our goal to please God and pray for the enablement to do so. Verse 11, increase spiritual power. Here in this context, it is not that uh, spiritual power for miracles or for prophecy, for healing or even speaking in tongues. But instead, it is to achieve two virtues. First, the endurance and then the patience. Let's pray that we will have that spiritual power to bear the fruit of the Spirit in all these virtues. May we be able to withstand giving in to our negative, soulish passions or desires and instead be ruled by faith, be ruled by love, be ruled by hope that we have in heaven. And in the concluding verses, since Christ has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and into the kingdom of light, let us constantly, let us constantly give thanks with a joyful heart as we share in his inheritance, the eternal life inherited through our faith in Christ. And in conclusion, faith in Christ first uh, is first receiving this gift of grace um, that will come along with this peace of God, that shalom, that experiencing of His grace. And the evidence of our faith in Christ is demonstrated through our prayer and expressed through our love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Martin Luther said this, To be a Christian without prayer, is no possible than to be alive without breathing. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Prayer and faith in Christ goes hand in hand. Our faith requires us to pray and we pray because we have faith. So shall we end this session with a time of prayer even right now? Shall we bow our hearts, bow our heads to pray? Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your grace that is accorded to us and your peace that so surround us. Thank you for granting us this salvation and our faith in you. And to some of us who have not fully known you, we ask that Jesus, you come into our hearts and we make you master and Lord of our lives, not just part, but all aspects of our lives. Help us to grow in spiritual maturity and be pleasing to you. Thank you for your forgiveness and your love and that inheritance of eternal life, which is through our faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and may you be blessed uh, by this first session. Our faith in Christ. We see you in our next session. Shalom.